Well, well, well. But you look at that. We're back. With another cup of Joe. Cheers. <clears throat> Man, that's some good coffee. Dutch Bros, you make your coffee with love. This is not a sponsor. This is not a plug. But Dutch Bros, excellent service every time I'm in the drive-thru. You make me feel like family. Sometimes I don't want to talk because I haven't had my coffee yet, but you're still showing love. And we love you. Ladies and gentlemen, on today's segment of Cup of Joe, I'm addressing a topic that gets brought up a lot in streams and just in general. People always ask me, hey Joe, how did you start DJing? I want to start doing it, I just don't know how. Well, I'm going to address a few things to y'all. I'm going to bring back the earliest memories that I have of DJing and also some beautiful moments along the timeline to the point that I'm at now. It all start <laughs> It all started Well, a little prequel to the story if you will. Something about me is I'm a very social person. I'm sure you guys know that by now. However, back in high school, I loved going to parties. I wasn't even smoking, barely drinking, just cause drinking helped with, like, with the social part. But um, I do have to say, I loved going to parties. It was a good time. It's like a relaxing time. It's like a, it's like a most. Oh damn! I gotta turn off the 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 shits real quick. Hold on, y'all. My fault. Oh geez. Lock back in. It's it's a time where you're separated from the normality of the world. You get to detach from work. You get to detach from responsibilities. And you just get to create beautiful memories. Hopefully, that's what it is. That's what partying was for me. Some of y'all are like, oh, hell no, pass the fucking, and let me get the, and let me do the, and it's like, okay, sure, no judgments, but let's stay focused. So I loved going to parties. Now it got to a point when I was like, mm, 19, 20 years old, when I was going to parties, and I was looking around, and I'm like, man, not really fucking with none of this energy. Like, I like being here, but like what everybody's doing, just going to meet somebody just to plow at the end of the night, not me, never had been me. So, uh, you know, I'm sitting there at this party wondering what am I doing here, bro? And I notice like every single party that I go to, people are dancing. And music has always been like something that I feel very strongly about. If I'm out in public and a song's trash, I'm commenting on it. If I'm out in public and the song's great, I'm commenting on it. And so I was at this party, everybody dancing, everybody having a good time. And I think to myself, man, this is fire. It's gotta be cool to be a DJ. So then I walk through the party, and I see the DJ in the corner. He's set up in the kitchen with a table blocking it off so no one could get behind him. First off, I was like, I fuck with that. I like that energy because I love to be doing me, but I also don't want people all up in my business. So respectfully, I approach him, bro. And I, and I knew who he was. And I walk up to him, I'm like, hey, bro, no pressure. You could say no. I know it's kind of strange. But, do you mind if I just watch you do your craft? Just like, you don't even have to explain anything. I just literally want to stand there and watch you do what you do. Seems kind of strange. But, it's all about your approach and your energy you're giving. And I was just like, bro, like, you can say no, it's no big deal. Like, I just, you know, 
just kind of want to chill. And he was like, oh, bro, of course. Bro moves his table, lets me in the booth. And he was actually kind enough to even explain some things as he was doing it. So he's like, all right. And he like, he like waved me over. And I was like, what's up? And he's like, put these headphones on. So I put the headphones on. And for those of you who don't know, you could cue up a song in your headphones to make sure it sounds good with the song that's already playing out and to line it up, fine tune it, all those things. So I was sitting there and I was like, oh, okay. And then I got hyped off of that. Like, bro, you're always setting yourself up. And it just like, when you're watching a DJ, it just looks like, oh damn, they're just like one to the next to the next. And that is what it is. But like, just to get that little piece, I was like, oh, okay. And then he took the headphones back and he's like, now watch and he just showed me he like killed the bass of like the track that he was bringing in just had like the vocals only and then he like added the vocals in and then when it got to a certain point he was just showing me his craft and then he was like tweaking the the bass and just everything and i was like oh no bro i get it and even before that moment like i would hear music on the radio and be like this sounds like this song like if you use this verse on this song that would be fire so like for me, it was something that already felt natural and I understood like immediately. So when he stopped DJing, I left the party, went to bed and I was just in bed like, man, I could do this. So what did I do? The next morning I woke up and went to Guitar Center and purchased my first mixer. I was DJing every single day from that moment. Every single day, no matter what, I would do it. Some days I would do it six hours. Some days I would do it one hour. But I'm telling you, every single day I was on that mixer. Because like, like I said, music has just been always super important to me. And like, I just fell in love with it immediately. And like, for those of you that don't know, I used to be in a hardcore band. I used to play bass guitar. Uh, I used to play acoustic guitar in my free time just for fun and like just yeah just like music's always been in my life and so um it got to a point where like I would start posting stuff on Instagram or like my homies would come over and they would record me and then like my homie Chad he's in chat sometimes he used to have hella parties sorry he did sorry parents he did and we were always in that bitch. And let me tell you about the first story where I was like, oh yeah, I could do this. I could definitely do this. He he was like, bro, um, my brother's gonna DJ, but like you should bring your setup and DJ when he's done. And I was like, I don't know, bro. Like I've been doing it a couple months. Like I don't like, I don't even know. And he was just like, Bro, like, it's just a party. We're playing iPod music anyways, majority of the time. It's not going to be that much different. Let's just do it. And I'm like, okay. Fuck it. So I bring over my mix up or my mixer and my setup. And, um, you know, he was DJing. And, like, him and his homies, they were just, like, jumping in the living room, having a good time. And then I was like, oh, I'm nervous. What if people don't like what I play? Because I had a different playlist in mind i had a different playlist in mind and he was playing house and like high energy stuff and i was like i'm not going to be playing that and then they ended and i was setting up people were like what are you what are you gonna mix what are you gonna play and i'm just like man you're just gonna have to wait and see <laughs> and bro i will never forget the first song i played Still calling by Dom Kennedy. And there was, it was a, it was a pretty decent sized party, but like a lot of the people were outside smoking and a lot of the people were in the garage where like beer pong and just like all the, all the alcohol was set up in there. But when I played Still Calling by Dom Kennedy, motherfucking everybody came in and I was like, uh oh, uh oh. And everyone was like, oh yeah, we're fucking with this. 
And I was like, me too, but what am I gonna do next? Played it into some Busta Rhyme song. Instant reaction again. And I was like, <laughs> hold the fuck up. Wait for this next one. And then, bro, it just took off from there. And I will still, like that moment, I will always remember like everybody just walking in from like doing something else to come into the living room to just be like, bro, what are you on? That moment, as well as, uh, I played Kendrick Lamar backseat freestyle into Mr. Carmax pay for what? And mind you, like, I'm sure like a lot of y'all don't know that song. Maybe y'all do, but that song pay for what? Right when it came out, oh my God, bro. Music wasn't like that at the time. And like, bro, I was mashing it up and I build up Kendrick's lyrics to the drop, dropped it and everybody lost their shit and everybody like came behind the booth. They're like, what song is this? What the fuck did you just do right now? And I was like, yo, chill. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I just kidding. I did not do that. But um, that feeling was like, holy fuck. Like, I don't need to overthink it. Like, I could do this shit. Like, you know, and I feel like when it comes to DJing and any artistic thing, it's a craft. And art, like anyone who is artistic, anyone who is creative, self-doubt is like always in the back of your head. And it's really hard to just like step away from that. But bro, just trust the process, step away from the anxiousness of your mind. And bro, you'd be surprised what you can accomplish when you actually put your mind to it and just have fun, bro. It's like a lot of people forget it's like, you're supposed to have fun. So it's like, remember like, dude, I mean like for me in that situation, I'm like, well, I'm at a party. People want to hear music. And 90% of the time when you're out and about, they're, they're, the DJ is going to play a song that you really don't fuck with. So I just had to like accept that. Like not every song was going to be like that reaction. But like as long as I get those reactions or I get random strangers coming up to me and be like, dude, that was shit was hard. Like, do you have a SoundCloud? Do you have like this, that exchange information? That was enough for me, y'all. So from there, I just kept doing it for fun. And then my homie Ryan Kiros got me plugged in at the Yost Theater where we hosted the Berlizzi Ball two years ago. And that's when I played at a club for the first time. And same shit, bro. I wish I, there was a couple songs. There was like a Flying Lotus song that I played or there was like, uh, there was a China uh, remix, RIP China. There was a China remix that I played and I had everybody losing their mind and people coming up, same thing. What song is this? Where can I find you? Holy shit. And I was like, okay, yeah. So it's elevated from a house party to the club now. We could do this, y'all. We could do this. And then like my first big show, um, I was on the same lineup as DJ Mustard at the Yost. And um, that's when it started feeling like a little like like surreal but i still knew i had like a lot to learn um because like my homie ryan and my homie julian like they killed it bro like they were like nice as fuck and like it always pushed me it's like it's like you gotta surround yourself with people who also do your craft to inspire you but also to motivate you and then like my competitiveness just like kicked in and i was like bro i want to be the best you know what i mean and still today, I have so much I need to learn. And sometimes I get locked into my like comfort zones and do certain things that I know will work. But like, I'm telling you, when you just branch out and try some new shit, you'll be surprised with the reaction you get, man. And it was fire. And then like, yeah, I, I started DJing at another club called uh, Club Blue, I think it was. Like, I think it was called Club Blue um, in Huntington. And, um, yeah, man, same thing. Like, I was nervous because it was a new club and I played the Shimmy Shimmy Ya remix. Everybody, I remember looking up and everybody was like, stopped what they doing and they just stared at the stage and they were looking at me like going crazy. Everybody at the bar, everybody on the dance floor, everybody sitting down in the booths. I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And it's just fucking fire because music brings you together and like it creates memories i mean like this isn't a dj moment but i went to coachella one year and um it was super hot super hot at this stage that had no shade 
I was dying. I looked over at this bro and he was dying. And then I looked over at this other bro and he was dying. I don't know what that has to do about anything, but it was hot. And I started smoking a blunt and they came up. Neither of them spoke English and we were all there by ourselves. And then the guy was like, and I was like, man, hell yeah, pre-COVID, hell yeah, hit this. We started smoking. And then we were all vibing with each other, not saying a word to each other, but when certain songs would drop, we would be hyped and we would already know. And bro, it's just like, music is one of those things that can bring people together that you would never meet otherwise. You know what I mean? And I just think that's fire. And that's what I love about it. That's why I love to do it. Um, and that's why I'm always not afraid to just play, play a track that, you know, little bit out of the norm it's not like normal rap stuff or it's like you know it might not be like as popular or whatever but it's just like it's gonna connect with somebody and you know someone's gonna go home thinking like man that shit was fire and like as long as one person did that i did my job bro and um yeah man now i'm on twitch doing it every single friday night joe cella i love it bro i love it bro and I do want to get back into playing live shows. However, I got to give it a little bit more thought. And I got to make sure that it's a club that I want to play at. They're going to give me the freedom to do what I do. And lame heads aren't going to be there. Lame people, if it's going to be public, I can't control that. But, like, I would like to control it as much as I can. Because, like, I don't want fucking... I don't want custers in the crowd, bro. Like, I want everybody to be comfortable having a good time. I don't want people playing it too cool. Like, enjoy yourself, bro. And, um, yeah, man. I mean, like, basically the rest is history at that point. Like, I've just been doing it every day. And, uh, I've been saying that for a while. But even today when I was driving to go get some coffee, I was listening to some, some chill stuff. And I was like, man, like... I got to get back into doing DJ sets like this, too, because, like, Friday nights, it's high energy, and it always will be. It's Friday night. But I want to do another DJ set through the week or whenever it is that just features more chill stuff and just has a little bit more of a chill vibe to it just because I could do that, too. And I would also love to do that at a live venue. Like, you know what I mean? I don't think it always has to be high energy. But ladies and gentlemen, players, and that is a cup of Joe, and that is how I started DJ. There you have it. Don't ever ask me again. Hope you, I hope you enjoyed yourself, and um, I love y'all. I'll see y'all in the next episode. Y'all have a good night, good day, good evening, and if you have any questions maybe that might spark a cup of joe for me feel free to leave that in the comments down below this is the player signing out